Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. In the short time we've been working with John Deere, we've been extremely impressed and pleased with not only the products they're building, but with how interested they are in improving them based on customer and media partner feedback. Last season, we tested Deere's 2014 RSX 850i and came away impressed to say the least. Nobody expected a company that's so well known for building world-class agricultural and lawn care equipment to have such a solid understanding of what it means to be an excellent sport utility side by side. But this is not to say the 850 was without its shortcomings. We spoke up about a few things we felt Deere could do better in with that vehicle and on the 2015, a number of them were addressed. A full haze brake upgrade got rid of the spongy brake feel, redesigned intakes for the engine and CVT and a redesigned airbox cut down on intake sound levels and a long list of small improvements make a huge difference in overall noise and vibration. Instead of testing a 2015 850 this year, John Deere decided to give us a sneak preview of the 2016 860i, which includes all the same updates as the 2015 850 got, but also has a bunch of other new stuff as well. First, the 2016 860i is available with power steering. If you opt for the power steering equipped model, you automatically get a wiring harness that is pre-wired for a winch, which means if you want to add a winch, you just bolt it on and plug it in. No extra wiring is needed. The power steering system found on the 860 is very similar to that found on the 825i we tested earlier this year in that it's speed sensitive, which means it lessens the assist the faster you go. It also is sensitive to feedback from both the driver and the wheels. John Deere refers to this as anti-kickback, which is a very accurate way to describe the system's ability to lessen or eliminate the feedback from the wheels into the steering wheel. The next major change to the 860 in 2016 is that the top speed limiter has been raised from 53 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour. This may seem like a small change, but in reality, it allows the 860 to stretch its long legs even more. The 860 does not actually have a larger displacement engine or produce more horsepower as the name change might suggest. The speed increase is strictly a limiter change. To help increase durability, reliability, and cut down on noise, a set of spiral cut bevel gears are now standard in the front diff of the 860. Now it's important to note, this was not done to solve a problem. It was simply a change the engineers made to make the vehicle better. The final big update to the 2016 860i is not mechanical. It relates to the warranty. Previously, the 850i was the only model in John Deere's lineup that had only a six month warranty. For 2016, the new 860 gets a full 12 months like the rest of the lineup. The base chassis of the 860 is the very same as that of the 850. And we think this is good because it's proven to be very durable, reliable, we know it's comfortable and it looks cool. It's also among a very small group of true sport utility side-by-sides that still include a dumping cargo box. John Deere has proven they both understand what the recreational side-by-side -side rider wants and needs from their vehicle, and that they're committed to improving their products in response to the requests and demands of the market. On paper, this new 2016 John Deere 860i seems to have all the right ingredients to give vehicles like Can-Am's Commander and Kawasaki's Terex a serious run for their money. Now it's time to get it out on the trail and find out whether or not that's true. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. From the very first moment you hit the throttle on the 2016 John Deere RSX 860i, it's very clear John Deere wasn't messing around when they set out to build a competitive sport utility side-by-side. Its 850 V-twin engine, which has remained unchanged since the 850i model, has loads of bottom end. What has changed on this 860 is how far this engine revs out before the limiter kicks in. A seven mile per hour increase in top speed might not seem like a lot, but it is the difference between feeling disappointed and feeling pleased. While the extra seven miles per hour is very welcome, we still know the 860 has more in it and think the speed limiter should be removed altogether. 
An interesting side note here, John Deere spent a lot of time and effort on the 860 trying to quiet it down and give it an even tighter, higher quality feel than the 850. And we have to say, we think they've accomplished their goal in a big way. The new intake snorkels for both the engine and CVT and the new airbox take away any overly intrusive intake noises that were present on the 01415 model. Not to say we don't like a good induction growl, but on a vehicle like this one, it can become annoying. And while there's no question our last RSX lived up to John Deere's legendary reputation for build quality, the extra time and effort they put into eliminating squeaks and rattles on this 2016 model was well worth it. This might just be the tightest feeling side-by-side -side I've ever driven. Adding to that tight feeling are the new Haze brakes. They've solved any squishy or vague feelings we got from the 2014 model. These brakes are tight, easy to modulate, and confidence-inspiring in how hard they grip the discs. On the old model, you pretty much had to push the pedal to the floor to slow from a fast run. These new brakes bring the RSX to a stop with authority. This RSX is a sport model, which means it comes standard with high back bucket seats, a cool front bumper, and believe it or not, a full set of Fox 2.0 piggyback shocks all the way around. Now, I'm probably thinking the same thing you are right now, that these shocks seem a little bit out of place on this vehicle. But the fact of the matter is that the RSX was built with a purpose. It is meant to be a true sport utility side-by-side, -side, and it's meant to do both equally as well. Those high-end, fully adjustable Fox shocks are just one piece of the puzzle. Check out how these rear arms are attached to the frame. John Deere calls it the Multi-Link, and if it looks familiar, it's because you've seen it before on vehicles like Can-Am's Maverick XDS and Polaris's older Outlaw IRS ATVs. The A-arms are mounted on an angle, with the rear mounts being closer than the fronts. This means the arms pivot in an almost rearward arc, which improves how the vehicle responds to rough terrain. We're not saying you should be motocrossing your RSX. This isn't trying to be a Razor or a Wildcat, but what it is, is something we feel this industry is lacking. A sport utility side-by-side -side that's actually sporty. Its only real competition would be the Commander or the Terex. These are the only two sport utility side-by-sides that still include a dumping cargo box. Even Yamaha's Wolverine, which seems similar in appearance to the RSX, doesn't have a box that tilts. During our testing of the 860i, we've used it for all different types of sport and utility purposes. From hauling gear, to doing yard work, to towing trailers, it really is capable of anything a pure utility side-by-side -side can do. But we've also spent long days on the trail in both high and low speed situations, and it performs excellent there as well. The suspension can be as smooth as you want it to be, and a good set of tires will keep you moving in even the stickiest situations. I'm not going to say that you should, but we even hit a few jumps with it. Quite possibly the most important improvement made to the 2016 860i is the addition of power steering. We were truly baffled by the fact that our 2014 model didn't have power steering, even though it wasn't a base model and it is standard on other John Deere models and it works good on those other models. Why would their flagship RSX not get power steering? Now it does, and it really has been the last step in taking the RSX from a good side-by-side -side to a great one. This is a vehicle that can be ridden all day in complete comfort. The true heart of the side-by-side -side ATV has always been its versatility, but some of that versatility has been lost the past few years as vehicles get more high-tech and more specialized. The 2016 John Deere RSX 860i includes all the high-tech stuff, performance-inspired suspension, and aggressive looks you want without sacrificing any of the usefulness and capabilities you need. It's for this reason that this vehicle has quickly become one of our favorite true sport utility side-by-sides. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Eastern Ontario Trails Alliance. Your backyard just got bigger. It's no surprise that the biggest news in the sports side-by-side -side industry is the horsepower wars. So for this season, we chose to use one of these turbocharged horsepower monsters for our expedition build. The Maverick Max XDS Turbo is a beast of a side-by-side, -side, pumping out an initial 121 horsepower and now for 2016, 131 horsepower. It not only delivers on the power front, but also provides an impressive platform to deliver up to four people to their destination hastily. The Max was our pick due to the nature of our need to move a full group of people, not just two. And we wanted to be able to move that same group of people with great speed and agility. 
thanks to the wheelbase of the Maverick Max and the incredible suspension geometry, we knew there would be no question about it traversing just about any conditions we throw its way. But add to this the custom build work we would be adding to the rig, and we needed to ensure that not only current suspension abilities were good, but also future potential when weight, dimensions, and gear were added to the current platform. After testing the XDS Turbo and pushing it through a wide variety of trail conditions, we felt that it not only had the capabilities, but also the drive ability to make it the perfect platform for our Expedition build. Drivability and confidence behind the wheel are key in a stock, high horsepower rig like the XDS Turbo Max, but keeping the confidence high when traversing many miles far from the nearest civilization and still having that confidence when terrain becomes tough well, that's a job we knew the Maverick was up for after our time behind the wheel, and is precisely why it made the cut. In weeks past, we'd showed you how the Maverick had been stripped down to make room for the new custom fabricated rear bed. Removing all the stock pieces and getting to the base structure was key in knowing what we had to work with. Everything from tie rods to shocks were swapped out to allow us greater confidence in the vehicle's capabilities. Following our teardown, we shipped the Expedition rig over to Tim G of G&G Racing to let his custom fabricators build what we had only imagined on paper. While the original design we showed you had changed over the past few weeks, the end result is something totally different from a stock Maverick. With the help from Mike Bennett of TerraTech Off-Road, we were not only able to come up with a very cool design idea, but also a very unique coloration package that would fit the Maverick Expedition build perfectly. With all the custom parts completed, we sent the entire cage assembly, many small components, and pieces of the suspension off to our friends at the Powder Station in Edmonton, Alberta. There, the expert team of prep and painters would strip and refinish our parts to match the entire build. While the powder station can custom coat in a nearly unmentionable number of cool colors, whether it be flat or gloss or metal flake, we chose to use something that was a little more conventional. The standard black finish isn't candy apple red. It does match the current frame components and through the precise skill of the powder station crew will make the Expedition build look incredible. Because powder coat is electrostatically charged, powder is not actually bonded until it bakes. After about 20 minutes in the oven, it's hot, fresh, and ready to be loaded up and sent back to UTV Canada for the final assembly and rebuild of our ultimate Expedition Maverick Max XDS Turbo. One of the coolest features of our build is the added rear cargo bed, and it's really unique because it's built directly into our S3 cage as a one-piece unit. With powder finished, it was time to reinstall our cage, and the beauty of a product like this S3 cage is how nicely it fits back onto the Maverick. The rear bed looks near factory in its design, and once we had reinstalled, we're able to bolt on the cool SSV Works roll bar mounted stereo system with iPod holder behind the front passenger's head and in front of the rear passengers. Because of the slim design, the sight lines of the rear riders is not inhibited. While out on the trails, it's important to have the ability to do repairs, and at the top of the list of important tools is the power to run them. Power Tank supplied us with a beautiful CO2 tank and regulator, along with a full accessory kit for Quick Connects. While a vertical mount is ideal, we were limited to space, so a custom bracket was made to support the tank under the driver's seat, allowing for relatively easy access in a custom concealed design. Being an expedition vehicle, we knew that food was important. I mean, come on, when is it not? But for multi-day excursions, nobody wants freeze-dried, especially not me. Again, with the help from Tim G at g, g Racing, we were able to have a box fabricated to hold our ARB 12-volt fridge freezer. This box houses the ARB unit along with an insulating cover and allows access from the top and front. Freeze-dried food is a thing of the past on our expeditions. One of the keys with the rear cargo bed was that we wanted to make sure that it was not just functional, but also integrated into the design styles that were already present on the Maverick. G&G built us Zeus fastened side panels that had also been powder coated to match. This allowed the rear bed to look much more a part of the overall design and offers protection from intrusion of sticks or debris. Also in the powder coat list was a pair of Scepter 20 liter fuel can holders and military grade black matching tanks. This offers us the equivalent of a second full tank of fuel and double the stock range. While the rear cargo bed has many functions, we wanted to utilize a Jeep style rear swing tailgate to allow for more than just access into the box. And in true Jeep style, the rear tailgate was fitted with a spare tire holder. 
This ain't no donut, it's a full-size ITP Ultra Cross 32 and fits perfectly on the rear swinging gate. When you're out in the middle of God's country, you want to know that a pinch flat or cut tire isn't going to keep you from rolling on. The rear matching tire on the tailgate is totally functional on a build like the Expedition, but we had some extra space on the tailgate and we wanted to maximize its efficiency. AT Overland supplied us with a five pound propane tank and carrier that we had powder coated to match. Directly beside the rear tire was a nice little space for safe and secure mounting while still keeping the propane far from passengers. The five pounds of onboard propane will be ample fuel for cooking multiple days meals for a group of four. Again, no freeze dried because we're cooking with gas. While we still have many parts to install, we hope that you're enjoying our Expedition build. Tune in next week where we're going to continue the build with many more custom parts and continue our transformation. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Algoma. That real. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer. Built for adventure. You know what I'm getting really sick of in this industry? People either talking down about lower powered ATVs as if they have no purpose, or continually talking up the highest horsepower ATVs as if anything less is insufficient. We're all guilty of this, but it started to agitate me more recently when my focus as a member of the media has shifted from constantly telling people they need to have the biggest, baddest, highest horsepower ATV to trying to help people find the perfect ATV for them, one they can use and afford. Times are changing. The biggest and baddest crowd still exists, but more and more people are having to justify owning an ATV and making it fit into their budget. There is no shame in this and no one should be ridiculed for it. Especially when companies like Polaris are building vehicles like the Sportsman ETX, a full-size, fully capable ATV that can fit into almost any budget and can take you anywhere you want to go. The ETX was built to replace Polaris's very popular, budget-conscious Sportsman 400 HO. The 400 was a good vehicle, a decent performer, and made no excuses, but it was one of Polaris's oldest models, the only one left that did not include EFI and was definitely due for an update. The ETX is powered by Polaris's 31 horsepower ProStar mill. Now, interestingly, Polaris doesn't list the actual displacement of this motor anywhere. Even on the specifications page for the ETX, they only list horsepower. But we know it's 330 cc's, and we're pretty sure the reason Polaris doesn't list displacement is because they don't want buyers to miss the forest for the trees. In other words, they don't want people to overlook the ETX because it has small displacement, but rather get the message that it's putting out 31 horsepower, which is nearly identical to the old 400 HO. Identical power, yes, but this power is more refined. It's smooth and operation is effortless thanks to perfectly tuned EFI. The fact of the matter is that in this case, Polaris is right. Displacement doesn't matter. The 333c single found here is better than the 455cc single found in the old 400HO, despite being 125cc smaller. When it comes to the chassis, the ETX leaves no question about its Sportsman lineage. It's built on the same platform as the Sportsman 570 line and has many of the same specifications. Proven McPherson struts up front provide 6.7 inches of travel and double A-arms out back provide 9.5 inches. Having 6.7 inches of front end travel is the only aspect of the ETX we're disappointed with. From our perspective, there's no reason this vehicle shouldn't have the same travel as a Sportsman 570, and it's the only chassis downgrade an ETX buyer has to accept. The ETX drivetrain is all Sportsman, and it's among the best in the industry. There have been no downgrades here. A full high-low transmission, on-demand 4x4, shaft drive, single lever actuated disc brakes all the way around with stainless lines. It's all the same stuff as the high-end models. It's proven, it's durable, and it's reliable. It's at about this point you probably should be asking yourself if there are any features missing from this vehicle versus its higher horsepower siblings, and the answer is yes. But the list is short. 24-inch tires are small but work great with a 30-horsepower motor. 
A plastic clad steel rear rack isn't quite as nice as the bigger sportsman's racks and the gauge cluster houses an analog speedo. Now there's no power steering, but let's be honest, a vehicle like this doesn't really need it. On the other hand, the list of stuff you do get is more than long enough to make up for the stuff you don't. Huge under rack storage in the front, water resistant storage compartment in the back, a full complement of information is available on the digital portion of the gauge, and a 12 volt outlet is standard equipment. When you consider what the ETX is meant to do and who it was built for, it really is an impressive package. But there's one point we haven't covered and it's what pulls all of this information together. Price. $59.99 US MSRP, the ETX costs a mere $300 more than the old 400HO and it still had a choke. It's among the lowest priced full-size ATVs on the market, yet it remains fully comfortable and every bit as capable as vehicles costing twice as much. For six grand, what are you really sacrificing? Horsepower and bragging rights and that's about it. Now I'm not trying to say everyone should be riding an ETX. There are those who both need and want and equally as important can afford bigger, more expensive ATVs. But for those who can't, the ETX is nothing to be looked down upon. In fact, we think getting to the same places with less power is something to brag about. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, the ride says it all. And by Arctic Cat, share our passion. Like the video you just saw? Do you want to see more? Click the subscribe link and add the Dirt Tracks channel and you're going to see a whole lot more great content.